Hey, it's Metacosis Perfectionators, where medicine makes perfect sense. We resume our bleeding and coagulation playlist. In the previous video, we have talked about hypofibrinogenemia and hypoprothrombinemia. Today, we'll talk about factor V latent, so let's get into this. Steps of hemostasis are many. We start with vasoconstriction, then we have the platelet plug, thank you platelets, and then we have secondary hemostasis, thank you coagulation factors. Now, we don't leave the coagulation cascade active all the time. We should put brakes on it because power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. It's called the checks and balances, baby. One of the checks and balances are protein C and protein S. However, in factor V laden, factor V resists the checks and balances. It's overactive. It's super crazy. Coagulation is overactivated. That's why the patients have a very high risk of thrombosis. Sometimes could be 50x the general population. Ooh. And here are the steps of hemostasis that we have discussed before. Primary hemostasis and secondary hemostasis. Of course, you know the coagulation cascade because we have talked about this in previous videos. Here are the checks and balances. You have antithrombin 3, antithrombin, it's antithrombin and other factors, such as 9, 10, 11, 12. It's also anti-7. Tissue factor pathway inhibitor is a tissue factor pathway inhibitor. It inhibits the extrinsic pathway, hashtag factor 3 and factor 7. Protein C and protein S, they inactivate factor 5 and factor 8. C and S are anti-5 and 8. The purpose of CNS is to inhibit 5 and 8. When I inhibit 5, I'm anti-coagulation. That's why they are checks and balances. They are the brakes, not the accelerator. But in factor 5 laden, factor 5 is now mutant. It does not obey protein C and S. And therefore, it's always hyper. It's always activating thrombin and then fibrin and it's always forming clots. And that's why factor V laden is not a bleeding disorder, but a thrombophilic disorder. Here are the coagulation factors. You have the number, you have the name, you have the disease. Remember hypoprothrombinemia? Yeah, we had bleeding. Remember a anemia? Yeah, we had bleeding or thrombosis. And today we'll talk about factor V laden. In factor V laden we have what? Thrombosis. To understand protein C and protein S, we need to talk about thrombomodulin. Before we talk about thrombomodulin, where did thrombomodulin come from? From the endothelium. How about protein C and protein S? They are proteins. They came from the liver, just like the rest of the coagulation factor. Oh, and by the way, these need vitamin K as a cofactor. It's called gamma carboxylation. The enzyme is gamma glutamyl carboxylase. Back to thrombomodulin. It's an integral membrane protein that comes from the endothelium, so whatever, okay. It's a cofactor for thrombin. Oh yeah, because it's called thrombomodulin. It needs to bind to thrombin. Mm -hmm. Okay, thrombin plus thrombomodulin. Look at the name, I love the name. What does IN mean? It means protein. Modio is modulation. It's a protein that will modulate thrombin. Ooh, it will modulate thrombin from being pro-coagulation into becoming anti-coagulation. Thrombin has been brainwashed. Thrombin plus thrombomodulin. Now we have thrombin thrombomodulin complex or TTC, which will activate protein S and then protein S will activate protein C. And this is an important compound that's also known as activated protein C or APC. And then protein C will inactivate factors five and eight. C and S are anti five and eight and they act as anticoagulants. What was the purpose of this? Checks and balances on the coagulation cascade. And we have hit two birds with one stone. We now are anti-coagulation and we took the thrombin, we brainwashed the thrombin, so now we have less thrombin available to be pro-coagulation. And this is the genius of thrombomodulin. I love you. What's the organ? I'm the liver. What's the process? I'm the gamma carboxylation. What's the name of the enzyme? It's the gamma glutamyl carboxylase. Okay. Carboxylate, all of the factors, especially 2, 7, 9, and 10, protein C, protein S, and protein Z. Protein S will activate protein C. This is the APC, activate protein C, which will inactivate factors 5 and 8. And now we're not pro-coagulation, we're now anti-coagulation. That's why protein S and protein C are the brakes of the coagulation, not the accelerator. S and C, they suppress coagulation. 
There are some factors in life that want you to actually thrombose and some factors in life that don't want you to form a clot. How about the factors that are pro-coagulation? Oh, all of the coagulation factors, including Mr. Thrombin. How about the breaks or the anti-coagulation factors, the thrombomodulin, protein C and protein S, and heparin, like heparin? Like, do I have heparin right now? Oh yeah, uh, without being prescribed heparin by a crazy doctor? Oh yeah, you have it, it's natural. How about warfarin? No, 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 you cannot have warfarin unless somebody gave it to you. Warfarin is not a naturally occurring substance in your body, but heparin is. Now, three questions to stimulate your brain. Question number one, patients who have deficiency of protein C or protein S may suffer from, is it bleeding or thrombosis? Please pause. And the answer here, of course, is thrombosis. They are missing the brakes. Therefore, they have nothing but accelerators, accelerating the process of thrombosis. Some patients have a disease called familial thrombophilia. Look at this, hereditary thrombosis, like thrombosis, 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 all day, every day. These patients were found to have, is it resistance to the activated protein C or more sensitivity to APC? And the correct answer here is resistance to APC. I'm resisting the breaks, therefore I have nothing but acceleration of the process of thrombosis. Factor 5 laden is a genetic disorder where patients have a mutant factor 5, which is resistance to inactivation by activated protein C. This makes the patients more liable to bleeding or thrombosis. Please pause. The answer here is course, thrombosis. I'm resisting the inactivation. I'm resisting the breaks. Therefore, I have nothing but acceleration of the process of thrombosis. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Did you know that infusion of protein C can ameliorate sepsis? Oh yeah, and we have a medication for this. It's called Drotrecogen Alpha. Who named these things? Have you heard of warfarin-induced skin necrosis? Oh yeah, let me explain. What is the mechanism of action of warfarin? It inhibits vitamin K activation of protein C and S. It inhibits the vitamin K dependent gamma carboxylation of protein C, protein S, protein Z, 2, 7, 9, and 10. However, it inhibits protein C and S before it inhibits factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. In other words, it inhibits the anticoagulation factors before it inhibits the pro-coagulation factors. When I inhibit the anticoagulation first, in the beginning, I'll suffer from clots. Clots will occlude vessels, which will lead to tissue hypoxia. I will end up with skin necrosis, a phenomenon known as warfarin-induced skin necrosis or warfarin-induced skin thrombosis. And this is one of the reasons we need to bridge with heparin. We start heparin with warfarin. Why? Heparin acts faster and heparin will cover you in this ugly evil early period where you tend to be pro-thrombosis and then warfarin will kick in and actually do its flipping job of being anticoagulant. Then you can remove the heparin. I've told you it makes sense. If you already have a protein C or protein S deficiency, oh, look at this, of course, I'm more liable to skin necrosis on warfarin because I already have low levels of these and warfarin will inhibit them even more, at least early on. Of course, I'm more likely to develop warfarin skin necrosis. So what should I do? Use low dose warfarin or another anticoagulant to begin with. And today's topic. Factor 5 laden. Now it's a piece of cake. It's the most common hereditary thrombosis disorder. The most common inherited cause of hypercoagulability. Remember the Fercos triad? Oh yeah. We had endothelial damage, we had blood stasis, and we had hypercoagulability. Hashtag factor 5 laden. The most common genetic disease causing thrombosis. Risk of thrombosis will increase by 10x in heterozygous factor V laden mutation and by 50 freaking x in homozygous gene mutation of the factor V laden. And this is just insane. Factor V is mutant. It resists degradation by activated protein C. Yes, indeed, I'm resisting the breaks, therefore I have nothing but acceleration of the process of thrombosis. Back in the day, Rudolf Firko, old school guy, old school pair of glasses, old school suit, old school beard with no wax. 
He discovered the Fercos Triad, Endothelial Damage, Blood Stasis, and Hypercoagulability. Oh, and by the way, he is the first one to coin the term leukemia. I have lots of leukocytes in my emia. So where would factor 5 laden fit? Is it an endothelial damage, a blood stasis, or a hypercoagulability? It's a hypercoagulability, that's for sure. Did you know that there is a huge difference between the word thrombocytosis and the word thrombophilia? What does thrombocytosis mean? Thrombo are sites, thrombocytes are the platelets, and osis is a condition. It's a condition of tons of thrombocytes. Yeah, increased number of platelets. How about thrombophilia? Philia means to love. The Greek word is philos, which means love. You know those young people who say, all we need is love? Yeah, they're talking about philos. But they do not mean love of thrombosis because they are young and naive and they have not studied pathology. Life is not pink and rosy, kids. In fact, the only pink that you're gonna see is under the microscope. So where does factor 5 laden fit? Is it a thrombocytosis or a thrombophilia? Of course, it's a thrombophilia. I have increased risk of thrombosis. Could be 5x, 10x, 50x, 75x, or even 100x. Some bullet points. Factor V laden is a synonym to an activated protein C resistance. I love this name. Ooh, amazing. Etiology, genetic or congenital. Epidemiology, the most common hereditary thrombosis disorder. It's the most common hereditary cause of hypercoagulability. And by the way, most patients are of Northern European descent. What else was commoner among people of Northern European descent? And it was in pulmonology. It was cystic fibrosis. There was another disease in hematology, hereditary spherocytosis. If a dude from Wales or Sweden immigrated to Phoenix, Arizona, United States, he has an increased risk of what disease? And the answer is skin cancer. Because their skin color is so light, they are not used to too much sun. But now when they go to Phoenix, oh boy, it's really hot. Phoenix is one of the hottest cities ever. But it's far away from the equator. The distance from the equator is just one factor, not every factor. There are other factors at play that make Phoenix one of the hottest cities ever. Let's play this immigration game because I'm an immigrant. Okay, so we talked about the Swedish guy who left Sweden and went to Arizona. He has an increased risk of skin cancer. Okay, how about the girl from Nigeria who left Nigeria and immigrated to Northern Alberta, Canada. She has an increased risk of vitamin D deficiency. Her skin tone is dark. She used to live in a place that's very hot. Some of those sun rays will penetrate her skin and supply her with a sufficient amount of vitamin D. But now she is in Northern Alberta, the place where the sun does not shine. She is at a higher risk of vitamin D deficiency. But how about the Northern European guy in Northern Alberta? He will be fine because his skin is light. Even if the sun is little, it's capable of penetrating his light toned skin. But it's not going to happen with the Nigerian lady. That's why the Nigerian lady needs to carry a bottle of vitamins all the time. However, the Swedish guy who is now living in Arizona needs to carry a bottle of sunscreen all the time. Unfortunately, no one tells immigrants this. They only keep watching Dr. Phil. God help us. Hey, Medicosis, I've never heard of this. Where did you get this from? From Professor Bruce Nathan Ames from the University of California, Berkeley, one of the few hundred most cited scientists in all fields. Let that sink in. Pathophase. It's a gain of function mutation. It's a single base pair mutation. The factor V is now mutant. It resists the degradation by the activated protein C. Now I'm resisting the breaks. Symptoms, thrombosis, baby, arterial and venous, but mostly venous because like most of the time it's easier to cause a thrombus in a vein because of blood stasis. Hello. And we call this phenomenon venous thromboembolism. VTE is an important abbreviation that you should memorize for factor V laden. FVL, VTE. Diagnosis, genetic testing, management, anticoagulants, and you need a specialist. You cannot expect your family doctor to treat you for this. Are you going to wait for this doctor who, at best, is capable of sticking a thermometer between your two gluteal folds to measure your rectal core temperature to diagnose you and treat you for factor V laden? Stop it! Genetic causes of thrombophilia or hypercoagulability. These are genetic causes, not all the causes. Factor V laden is the most common cause. It's also known as activate protein resistance. Prothrombin G 2021 0A. 
I remember it by thinking of the G Summit in year 2021, which is next year, 0A. Jack2, I hate this guy, it's everywhere. Jack2 V617, it's also everywhere. Mutation, color mutations, antithrombin 3 deficiency, protein C deficiency, protein S deficiency, hyperhomocysteinemia, also known as homocysteinuria, dysfibrogenemia, we talked about it before, abnormal plasminogen. We are done with factor 5 laden, let's talk about prothrombin. G2021 OA and antithrombin 3 very quickly. Okay, prothrombin, whatever. Genetic mutation, there is increased prothrombin. Oh, yeah, which will lead to more thrombosis. Yeah, no duh. Antithrombin 3 deficiency. I have deficiency of the antithrombin. Therefore, thrombin is left uninhibited and unchecked, which will lead to increased risk of thrombosis. Oh, and by the way, this patient will need more heparin. If you prescribe an ordinary amount of heparin to ordinary patients, you need an extra dose of heparin for this. What, why is this? Because what was the mechanism of action of heparin? It was to stimulate antithrombin-3. But this patient has no antithrombin-3, or very few, or very little, so we need to give more heparin. Levidoid vasculopathy. Levidoid. Live, doid, or die. Haha, <laughs> not funny. Vasculopathy plus intravascular thrombosis together. And therefore, factor 5 leading can increase your risk of intravascular thrombosis, which can increase your risk of levidoid vasculopathy. Alteration. What's the mechanism? Why do we have alterations? It's probably most co most common cause is venous hypertension or disorders of hypercognitivity, such as factor 5 leading. That's why factor 5 leading can lead to alterations. I have 50 hematology cases about bleeding and coagulation disorders on my website. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my bleeding cases and my antibiotics course. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. I love you.